This next trick is gonna blow your mind. It is honestly one of my favorite GRE and GMAT quant tricks. It's all about the units digits of numbers to different powers. And it's incredibly useful. It comes up all the time in the test. You have to know it. I normally reserve this for my paying students, but you're getting it for free today only. I'm just kidding. You can kind of watch this video anytime you want, but still, Here's the trick. If I asked you what three to the power of 33 ends in, what would you say? Now, even if you had the calculator, which you do in the GRE, that would take forever to type in. So what do we do? Well, here's the secret. Every single digit from zero to nine goes in certain cycles when you raise them in powers. Let's take the number three, as in this question. You can write this down and you will see it on the screen, but it's very useful to remember. Three to the power of one is of course three. Three to the power of two is nine. Three to the power of three is 27, but forget the two, forget the 20, just focus on that seven. Just focus on the units digit. Three to the power of four would be 27 times three. Now you might know that is 81, but forget the, the 80, just focus on 27 ending in a seven, and what's seven times three? is 21. So three to the power of four is gonna end in a one. You didn't need to know that 27 times three is 81. Again, just focus on that number seven at the end and realize that seven times three is 21. So three to the power of four is gonna end in a one. So notice the pattern so far, three, nine, seven, one. And can you guess what the next power would be? What would three to the power of five end in? Well, if three to the power of four ended in a one, when we times that by three, the next answer, three to the power of five, is gonna end in a three, because one times three is three. And we're back to the start of the cycle. The cycle is gonna repeat again, three, nine, seven, one, three, nine, seven, one, forever. We have now found the unit digit cycle for the number three. It goes three, nine, seven, one, three, nine, seven, one. Now our challenge is to find out, for example, what three to the power of 33 ends in. Some students might wanna do this with their fingers and just count up to 33. And that's fine, it just takes quite a long time. What I recommend is noticing that all the multiples of four end in a one. So three to the power of four ends in a one. And then three to the power of eight ends in a one. So we can use that to go all the way up to the nearest multiple of four to three to the power of 33 which is three to the power of 32. And that's gonna end in a one. Therefore, the next one in the sequence, three to the power of 33, is gonna end in a three. So without working it out, we can confidently say that three to the power of 33 ends in a three. Quite a nice coincidence, I think. Don't worry, if that was a lot to take in, we're gonna do a couple more examples to get you going. Now, before we move on, I've got a quick question for you. What is 39 times 64? You can't use a calculator, and the options are 2496, 2544, or 2468. What would it be? You've got three seconds. It would be 2496 out of those options. Why could we be so confident? Because 39 ends in a nine, and 64, ends in a four, and nine times four is 36. We know the answer of 39 times 64 is gonna end in a six. So it had to be, of those options, the one that ended in a six, two, four, nine, six. It's an amazing shortcut. Again, it's one of my favorite tricks for the GRE and the GMAT. I don't know about you, but I'm absolutely loving this trick. So if you are too, please do leave a like, and leave a comment or leave a question. I appreciate every single one. Time for one ultimate question that really tests if you understand this units digit 
shortcut. Time for one last ultimate question that really will test if you understand this units digit shortcut. What is the remainder when 16 to the power of 16 multiplied by 17 to the power of 17 is divided by five? If you like, you can pause the video and have a go at this one yourself first, or you can wait to see my explanation. It's really at the upper end of questions, so if you're getting this right, you're doing really well. Okay, first things first. Don't be intimidated by the fact that we're dealing with two digit numbers like 16 and 17. The trick applies to the unit digit only. So for 16, just focus on that six. Let's establish the unit digit cycle for the number six. Six to the power of one is six. Six to the power of two is also six, also ends in six. Six to the power of three is also gonna end in six because six times six is 36. So the powers of six always end in a six. So we can be 100% confident that 16 to the power of 16 ends in a six. While we're on this topic, let me just get something very clear. The cycles always go in cycles of one, two, or four. They never go beyond four. Remember with the number three, we had the cycle three, nine, seven, one, three, nine, seven, one. It will never go beyond cycles of four. That's the good news. What numbers cycle in cycles of one? Well, like the number zero, that will always end in zero, no matter what power you raise it to. If something ends in a one, it will always end in a one, no matter what power you raise it to. Likewise with the number five, if something ends in a five, no matter what power you raise it to, it will end in a five. And as we've seen with the number six, no matter what power you raise it to, it will always end in a six. What about cycles of two? Can you spot the numbers that have a cycle of two? That would be the numbers four and nine. Four to the power of one is four. Four to the power of two ends in a six. Four to the power of three ends in, or well, six times four, we're back to four again. And four to the power of four is gonna end in a six. So it's four, six, four, six, four, six. With nine, the pattern is nine, one, nine, one, nine, one. But for the other numbers like two and three and seven and eight, the cycles are cycles of four. Okay, now we've got that out of the way. We know 16 to the power of 16 ends in a six. What about 17 to the power of 17? Again, we're gonna focus on the units digit only, that's seven. What's the cycle pattern for the unit digit of seven? Can you tell me? Well, seven to the power of one is seven. Seven to the power of two is 49, which ends in a nine. Forget the 40, just focus on the nine. Do nine times seven now to work out what seven to the power of three ends in. Nine times seven is 63. So we know seven to the power of three ends in a three. And now again, just focus on the three and times by seven again. Three times seven is 21, which ends in a one. So can you see the pattern? It's seven, nine, three, one, seven, nine, three, one. Again, the cycle never goes beyond cycles of four. So that's the pattern, seven, nine, three, one, seven, nine, three, one. So 17 to the power of 17 is gonna end in what? Let's do that multiples of four trick again. Seven to the power of four ends in a one. So all the multiples of four in terms of the power will also end in one. So 17 to the power of 16, for example, because 16 is a multiple of four, is gonna end in one. Therefore, 17 to the power of 17 is one more than that in the cycle, so we're back to ending in a seven. So we know 17 to the power of 17 ends in a seven. Bringing this all together, we know 16 to the power of 16 ends in a six, and 17 to the power of 17 ends in a seven, which by the way is a coincidence. Don't think that it always ends in the number that the number itself ends in. And finally, we do six times seven to see what the overall multiplication ends in. Six times seven is 42, which ends in a two. So we can confidently say that 16 to the power of 16 times 17 to the power of 17 ends in a two. 
But what about the actual question? What's the remainder when this answer is divided by five? That kind of makes it much harder, right? Well, not really. All numbers ending in a two have a remainder of two when they're divided by five. Think about it. The number 12 has a remainder of two when you divide it by five. The number 22 has a remainder of two when you divide it by five. It seems like a really hard extra facet of the question, but actually it's quite a simple way to finish off the question. If you divide that answer by five, the remainder is gonna be two because numbers ending in a two always have a remainder of two when you divide them by five. So the final answer to the question is the remainder is two. And we could only get that with this incredible, mind-blowing unit digit shortcut. So if that doesn't impress you, nothing will. I really hope you like the video. Again, please leave a like, comment. I read them all and have a great day.